Having impressed on the international courses in recent times, it's time for one of the Isle of Man's star golfers to make the jump into the professional game. Anna Dawson will make her pro debut next week at the Magical Kenya Ladies Open, an event on the Ladies European Tour from the 2nd to the 5th of February at the Vapingo Ridge Resort in Mombasa. The opportunity comes after the Peel competitor earned herself a category in Ladies European Tour qualifying school at the end of 2022. So how much is she looking forward to this first pro challenge and just how many tour events could she make it onto this season i caught up with anna to find out oh no i'm really excited obviously since i started playing the game the whole goal has been i wanted to turn professional so obviously getting to do that i feel very lucky but obviously to be making my professional debut in a european tour event definitely makes that just that much sweeter and yeah really excited to get out of there especially going to Kenya obviously a complete different part of the world I'm used to competing in England so it's going to be really different but yeah I'm really excited for the experience. You couldn't get too many more different places between Kenya and Peel could you? <laughs> no they are quite polar opposites we were having a look at the weather and I think it's given low 30s and about 70% humidity so I mean you know even Peel in summer is not kind of getting close to that so it will be pretty different different but yeah I'm not going to complain about it. Looking back uh, the reason that you're there is thanks to your performances over at the Ladies European Tour qualifying school back in December you earned a category 16 from that so although I know it isn't certain at this stage do you know roughly how many tour events it could get you into throughout the year depending on circumstances? Yeah it's so tricky because we went to they had a players meeting after we got through first stage um, ahead of final stage just for a bit of information and kind of just giving an indication really of if you finished, you know, within these spots and in this category, then this is what it got last year. So last year they said with the category 16 I earn, it would be a minimum of 15 events, which is obviously quite a lot. Like that's a pretty full schedule. Most girls tend to play about 20, just over 20. But um, they normally, the events which are at the start of the year, the girls who got my category last year played them and unfortunately after um kenya i haven't got in them yet so there's a couple more but they're just um bigger tournaments this year so they've got you know better courses they've got bigger prize funds and it is great because obviously it shows the women's game is heading in a great direction but with that obviously becomes more competitiveness and more girls wanting to play so i'm kind of hoping once we get back into europe and start competing i think that's more so may time they make the fields a bit bigger so these first six or seven they have kind of across um africa and asia they're a field of um, about 90 but once we get into europe it's 140 so i'm kind of hoping you know once we get back into competing a bit more consistently and across europe that i will get to play a lot more consistently and be able to move up the ranks because there is another opportunity as well to better my category yet so if i can get inside I think they have two different parts of the re-rank, but after the first seven tournaments, if you're certain high up on the rankings, then I'll get a better category. And again, then that will just give me more starts for later on in the year. Looking to Kenya and then beyond that, now that you're getting your professional campaign underway, you mentioned about the amount of events that do come up throughout the actual season. How are you going to prepare for that, that intensity and that level of competition that might have been different to, say, previous years? Yeah, I mean, it is really different and it is something obviously I've given quite a lot of thought into, but with the position I'm in right now, where obviously, you know, I haven't kind of got that experience yet and I'm not too sure what to expect or where I'm going to be playing. A lot of it I'm just going to have to take as it comes. Um, entries only close two weeks before the tournament. So I, I would love to be able to plan ahead and be like, OK, yeah, I'm going to do this and that. But yeah, a lot of it's going to be maybe a bit last minute and just, you know, taking taking every opportunity that I can get and we'll just see how it plays out. They have um, the LET Access Tour, so it's just the tour below the European Tour where you can play on them events and if you do so well, you progress onto the European Tour. So I think if there is a few weeks I'm not getting in the main tour events, I will play them just to, you know, stay competitive and fill out the schedule. I, I don't want to, you know, not get the chance to be playing throughout the year I want to be just playing as many tournaments as I can and just get you know used to playing at that level. You touched on it in one of your answers just before but in terms of making that step up to the professional level aside from the fact that you'll be coming up against high caliber players what are the sort of differences in the courses and in your game and other people's game that you think you might be seeing? Yeah, well, Q School, the course was set up a bit longer um, than maybe some of the amateur tournaments that we played. Um, fortunately, 
luckily for me I would say one of my strengths is my distance so that didn't kind of make too much of a difference but I saw a big step up with the girls I played with at pre-qualifier compared to the final qualifier and you know they hit it they did hit it further and everything was just a bit more tardy so I think the the courses might be set up a little bit different but I was fortunate enough the girls I played with at final stage were really nice and they played on European tour the last couple of years so I got to ask them a few questions and I think the setup was very similar to how we played at La Manga and you know I felt I did feel comfortable on that course so if it if it's like that then it's just going to be managing staying on top of my game and managing playing such a fuller season this year obviously with all the travel on top of that as well it is just going to be a lot more um, tiring. Again just off one of your points there about speaking to other players yes you'll be focusing on your own objectives and what you can do to continue to improve your game but what value does it have you know being able to see other players of that level and you know higher up the rankings to see what you could pick up from them? Yeah, it's it's so insightful. I, I got a couple opportunities this year with Q School and getting to final open qualifying where I have been surrounded now more by players playing obviously at a higher level and you can learn a lot and I think sometimes more than anything it, it can be really positive to compete against them and know that you can compete against them as well. Obviously when you're looking in just watching your results online or watching it on the TV it it can seem like such a step up and be like, wow, like they're doing that. And then all of a sudden you're being drawn with them and playing with them, which is is quite obviously an unusual experience. I think sometimes you can big stuff up to be bigger than maybe what it is. You can make it quite big in your head. So, yeah, I think more than anything, it can be really positive to be surrounded by them and be like, oh, OK, like, you yeah, know, like I can play against these girls. But, yeah, being fortunate enough to be able to have conversations with them and ask a bit about you know how they found it and just stuff that you know you'll only learn as you go it does make it a bit easier to prepare for just one final question i'm not going to ask you to make any specific predictions here but where would you like <laughs> to see yourself i guess you know come the end of the season you know whenever that may be for yourself what would you like to have achieved as a kind of first instance yeah obviously it is just tricky not being entirely sure where i'm going to play but if i can better my category for next year on the european tour then obviously i'd take that i think it'd be a really good kind of first year and it would give me something to build on for next year then with a bit more experience behind me and obviously more opportunities to play next year i think i think that would be a good step in the right direction thank you for having the stamina to make it to the end of the manx radio sportscast you're clearly someone who has their eye on the ball at all times want to hear more about the latest sporting news across the isle of man and much more then might I recommend you take the plunge and subscribe to this series or a wide range of Manx Radio podcasts at your favourite podcast provider so that, in a flash, all of our finest moments take a winner's place on your smartphone. Thank you.